I'm Joanne Kelly, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Interfaith Network on Mental Illness in Boulder, Colorado. This Caring Clergy video outlines reasons for starting a spiritual support group in your faith community and offers some guidelines for starting a group. First, let's talk about the reasons to offer a spiritual support group especially one that is focused on persons who are affected by mental illnesses, which are also called brain disorders. One simple reason is because one out of every four people in every faith community is affected by a brain disorder. That means 25% of your congregation is affected directly, in addition to their family members or loved ones who may need help coping with their loved one's illness. That's a large group of people. If being a faith community means being compassionate or being a presence or channel for what is holy or sacred, then offering a spiritual support group would mean offering a safe place where people can meet and openly name what is spiritual in their experience with mental illness. Spiritual support groups are valuable because being together affirms that each person does not have to be alone with his or her struggles. Hearing each other's stories and life experiences, we can break the silence that surrounds mental illness and the enormity of the silent burdens we carry. Speaking out in a safe place allows isolation to dissipate. Another reason to offer a spiritual support group is that almost everyone who lives with mental illness has had some kind of a positive or negative experience around spirituality or religious beliefs. Most adults I have met who have a mental illness can tell stories about a person in the pulpit who said medications are not needed for mental illness, only faith will heal. Or they tell about being avoided or shunned by congregants because they look different or seem peculiar in some way. Alongside those negative experiences that thwart spirituality, there are times when a person realizes that it's only because of his or her faith that they have made it at all, knowing that a faith community has offered prayer for them, or even during worship, the clergy prayed for those who are struggling with mental illnesses such as major depression, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia, and their families. To be able to confirm those experiences and put them in the context of listening without judgment can be healing. A spiritual support group allows participants to share the strategies and disciplines that have helped them, and those experiences may help others. In a sharing environment, participants learn that writing in a journal, praying, and reading devotional material, going to groups for support, exercising, and paying attention to good nutrition can all be helpful. Learning from those who are living with these issues is sometimes the best medicine for someone who is also struggling with similar issues. Once you have decided to start a spiritual support group, you need to find co-facilitators for the group. It's good to have one person who leans more towards the religious or spiritual side, as in a member of the clergy, and one who has experience as a counselor. This approach provides a richness of seeing the common perspectives that are offered by each of these people. I don't mean to imply that each of these perspectives is exclusive, but rather with two people, it's easier to underscore the presence of both dimensions in recovery. It's critical to establish a set of guidelines for your spiritual support group that cover issues like confidentiality, respectful listening, and no judgments. This is primarily a list of group behaviors that create a safe space that is conducive to conversation. It's a good idea to read the guidelines at the beginning of every meeting asking everyone who so chooses to select one to read. After you ask the group to confirm their acceptance of the guidelines, close the door of the room to indicate that the space has been set aside for the group's exclusive use. Many times we will light a candle on the table in the center to symbolize the presence of the Spirit. I recommend you begin with some quiet time. Invite each person to take se several breaths to sit quietly, to set aside everything in his or her mind, and to acknowledge what is sacred, holy, or divine, in whatever way they perceive those qualities. This practice moves the meeting beyond just conversation and adds spiritual context. We have offered a short poem or affirmation in our group. Invite participants to introduce themselves by saying their first names 
and stating the situation that brings them to this group. Encourage them to make their statements brief and let them know they will have a chance to say more later. After those who wish to speak have done so, start the conversation by asking questions. You can develop a list of questions you can ask regularly or come up with unique questions based on the themes that have been shared. Some of the regular questions might be, how important is religion, faith, or spirituality in your life? Can you give me examples of how you practice religion, faith, or spirituality in your life? Where has your spirituality helped or hindered you in what you are experiencing? What have you heard in your faith community, if you belong to one, that has not been helpful in your recovery? What has been helpful? How do you understand what is sacred? How do you think of God? Have you asked for support? If so, of whom? Some of the questions that may come up after listening to the updates may be related to the recovery process, and some may be related to the link between recovery and spirituality. Recovery process questions include, in what ways are you taking care of yourself? What do you do when you are down? If we could provide support for your recovery in this realm, what would you like that to look like? What might be helpful from this group? In what ways have you experienced isolation? Recovery and spirituality questions include, what are ways that you might receive support for your recovery in the realm of spirituality and faith? How has forgiveness been extended to you or when have you extended forgiveness to someone else? When did you come to embrace that you are a child of God, a person of worth? Keep to the beginning and the closing times as promoted. At the end of the group, you, may, you might ask what people will take from the discussion that will help them through the next days and weeks. You may offer an appropriate reading. You may close with a circle holding hands, if that seems appropriate, and ask someone to share a word or phrase that they would offer to each other. It's good to have some sort of closing that marks the end of the group. It's hospitable to have available water or soda and something small to eat, such as a cookie, a piece of chocolate, a brownie, or a piece of fruit or carrot and celery sticks. As we read and learn more and more of the importance of spirituality in a person's recovery and mental health, we encourage faith communities to develop an ongoing spiritual support group. A congregation can set aside an hour and a half twice a month for this supportive ministry. Making the group known through the congregation's announcements and even putting it in the local newspaper, if there's a listing of religious services and programs, is a good way to get the word out and is another way to break down the stigma that prevents conversation and support to those who are in need. Mm -hmm.